Whiskey's response was to Bank W was kind of sarcastic. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. You think you should have done that? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It wasn't necessary. But you, don't, you also don't know what was going on between them at the time. Oh. Um, it, what was going on between them at the time might have been way more controversial than a lot of people know. Bank W got married in what, 2019, 18, 17? Yeah, Wait. December 2016 was wedding party. He proposed in 2017 or 20, 2017. Yeah. So that means they got married probably in 2018, right? So 2018, that was like three or four years after we left. I mean, it looked like they had a rapport at the time, right? But at the same time, you don't, you, you might not know what was going on at the time. Maybe there was still some bad blood from Wizzy's side. They had not fully gotten over what happened on the label. But Banky felt like, oh, you're my brother. I should have gotten over it as well. But Banky was speaking innocently. It's fine if he wants to express that. It's just like Kanye going on a rant because Jay-Z didn't attend his wedding. Do you understand? It's what it is. And Jay-Z is saying that I can't come to your wedding because my house was on fire. I was having a night trial and my wife caught me. Do you understand? So different perspectives, but that conversation, Banky was saying it on an interview. Which responded, which responded during on, on social media. There's a difference. Someone responded during an interview. What do you expect him to say? It's a tell-all interview. You're supposed to tell all. You could have had the conversation behind you on an interview as well. Choose to have it on an interview where you clarify things. But then LOL, no, it wasn't necessary. It felt a little petty. My, Opinions here now, especially especially as regards the PR that they had after the Grammy with Angeli Kijo, with the Jada PR and everything. That was that that PR. It wasn't an, it wasn't the right PR move at the time. It wasn't necessary. Someone needs to be controlling some of these things in that camp. They need to control what goes out from that camp. Oh, interesting. But why do you think artists label relationships always go awry? Bro, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of stuff. Um, it's a bunch of stuff. Nigeria is a, it's the poverty it's, it's the poverty capital, bro. The poverty capital, where the average person is reported to live under one dollar a day. And this is that's, I think it's even reduced now to like eighty percent or ninety cents. I mean eighty cents or ninety cents. So it's really really bad in this country. Um, people at the bottom, people at the, at the lower rung of the company, they have dreams, right? They have dreams. They have things they want to achieve. People are looking at other people that have achieved in certain fields and looking at them. Like the average Nigerian parents are thinking of getting, making it through education, right? But kids right now are thinking about making it as sports stars, as artists, as all of these things because it makes it easy for them to make money. Now, most Nigerian people, the rich in this country is the top 1%. Now, the, the, the poor, like lower middle class to lower class, represents a huge chunk of this country. It reported about 60 or 75 percent, or even 70 percent. So that means a lot of people that are even in the middle, middle class or the upper class, their parents cannot, cannot even fund their careers because they don't believe in it, believe you should be in school. So look at it this way. It means that, my brother, most people need someone to fund their careers. That's what it means. Now, these guys are coming from a place of poverty. So it means when you get someone that is willing to throw a hundred million, two hundred million, give you a house, give you a car, style you, give you some money as an as advance, give you a chance to even to, 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 to even make some money back from shows and endorsements. You are jumping at it. Do you get? You are jumping on it because it's the opportunity of a lifetime. We did an episode of the Van Services companies and distros last year, and we're talking about how some of these guys, artists now have access to money, but it's not even money that can blow them. It's not money that can blow. Bro, to blow in this country, you are looking at over 70 million. I know I, I know if it's some people that spend upwards of 10, 20 million on singles. One single. One in promotions. Hey, for context. I don't know one in Igbo and Alsa for Azobia effect. Anyway, the point is, I don't one single. Bro, now you are looking at videos. You are looking at radio. You are looking at payola. You are looking at, you are looking at a lot of things. You're looking at style. You're looking at fashion. Interviews. Flying them here. Flying them there. With their team. With their... You're looking at all those things. Right? So, my guy, you're looking at upwards of a hundred million to blow one of this off, 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 a, off one body of work. So, my guy, a lot of artists think when artists start making money, they now start looking at the money that they're not making. 
Hmm. Like, maybe you signed a contract for 60 40 splits on performance royalties, on performance. Maybe you signed, maybe you signed 80 20 on sync. Maybe you signed um, 70 30 in your favor for endorsements or brand deals, right? But you are now thinking, maybe you don't go to an event where you know that you made seven million dollars. I'm seven million naira, but then you get back. So now give the label 60% of that money is a problem. Do you understand? Because you are thinking, oh more. So after I performed 20, like seven hours as headliner at this show, I'm now going to give this, I'm only going to collect 21, 2.1 million. Label is going to collect 4.9. How? That's where the problem starts. But remember that I said something. Just as we have, just as artists, artists get, they have short memories. You are not remembering when the label took you from the debt. They took a chance on you. They spent money. This Nigerian music industry, people are not making money from, people are not really making money from direct sales. Mm -hmm. uh, even in this streaming that we are talking about, okay, maybe there's an there's, there's international market now where tariffs favor them, where consumer behavior favors Nigerian music, where Afrobeat is going, like it means you can make some money from there. But the chunk of money for artists anywhere in the world it comes from live shows and endorsements. So my guy, label and in Nigeria, Nigerian labels. How many people are going to cross over? Not in, everybody's not going to cross over. So it means everybody's still going to be chopping beans in this country. Most people are still going to be chopping beans and gary in this country. Right? So the point is, if a label took a chance on you then, you should be thinking with the mentality of that time, not what you're making currently. But artists think of where they are currently. They don't think about where they were when, they are, when the label picked them up. So there's not a clash of perspectives. And artists forget that they signed the contract. My guy, you signed, if it's a three album deal, my guy, sit down there and fill the terms of your contract. But artists now start fighting. They know that if they come to social media, people are going to take their sides because it's big versus small. The label is the big guy, the artist is the small guy. But Nigerians always take the side of the smaller guy against the big guy. But the thing is, my guy, you signed a contract. See, the long and short of most the artist labor situation is, you signed a contract. You signed a contract. If you send the contract, my guy, fulfill it. It's simple. Huh. Talking about the risks for the artist and the record labels, who do you think bears the most risk? For the label. Huh. Artists don't bear no risk. They don't, I mean, they bear risk in terms of like their growth potential. But look at it this way, my brother. Lib, lib, even after you sign a 360 deal, the only way labels can make their money back on Nigerian artists is 360 deals. If you don't sign a 360 deal, you are not making anything. You might not make your money back. That's why a lot of people are scared of this era of labor services and distros because they are pouring so much money and people are scared that will these people make the money back? Even in foreign countries, people are signing 360 deals or quasi 360 deals now because my guy, they need to make the money back on your advance. And the money that they are still expending on your music videos and, and whatever. So my guy, in this situation, in terms of like your growth potential, your growth potential, what an artist could become. Maybe you are saying that you are taking a risk because if you blow, now the deal might be to your detriment. That's why a lot of artists now try to get out of their record deals. Look at Drake, for example. He had to get out of the Young Money deal. He released a double album because he just needed to get out because he was making a hell of a lot of money. He was even bragging that he was keeping the lights on in the Universal Music Building. He was bragging, right? So, my guy, the point is, even in foreign countries where there's, there are structures, only a significant, only small, only a small amount of the artists that are signed get to make it to the public. So why would label the one artist that blows? That's how that's how labels stay afloat. The one or maybe the five artists that blow out of the thirty that they sign in a year that are in development. Some are in development; they will never come out. So, bro, that's the thing. People don't see some of these things that these labels do. They take a lot of risks. So my the risk significantly belongs to the side of the label. It's easy. What is the ones that make the money do? Yeah, they're the ones that make the money. But I'm the one that spent the money for you to be able to make the money. End of story. If I didn't spend the money on you, would you be able to make the money? Probably not. You want to be an independent artist? Say, go on, let's, let's see you become Ross now. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. <laughs> Why do you think we can bring this solution to all this drama? Shout out to my, one of my guys, Shegun, who works for Maven. Two years ago, he said that he thinks that labels also need to start coming out. When they are spending money, they should be putting it on a public, public platform. So the artists, the public also knows that the label is doing this job. 
Because the only time we hear about the artist liberal relations is when the artist comes and says, Hey, Babio, bro, that's the only time we hear, literally, that's the only time we hear about the inspire of the mountain. If, 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 if the label, labels need to normalize coming out first to say, Hey, Babio, my artist is moving mad. Look at everything that was meant. Or else, bro, that's the only way. <laughs> This is moving mad. I spent 200 billion. Bro, that's the only way. Or else it's not going to work. That's the only thing. And that's facts only.